I'm not a prepper. I don't want an underground fallout shelter. I don't want to hoard military rations and toilet paper. But I do want to preserve, protect, and share open information. Open information has been at the core of my entire career. From sharing academic articles, my various ongoing projects to keep stuff alive on Internet Archive, to my original start teaching video broadcast and streaming when things were hidden behind gatekept doors. I've lost enough data on my own and seen too many websites and forums disappear to trust the old saying that the internet never forgets anymore. Betrayed by the myth that something uploaded to the internet can never be taken away, I've seen others beg for backups of their favorite online game. People come together to keep a website alive just long enough to generate an archive of it, and I've seen the devastation that a free photo hosting site nuking all of their photos can have on forums and websites everywhere. Most recently, the data hoarding and archiving scenes have had to rush to try to mirror thousands of data sets research pages and websites from the general government websites and the Department of Energy, NASA, and most wickedly the CDC as the current administration is set on destroying science that is inconvenient to target the Wokies rather than lowering the cost of eggs or housing, or any of the countless groceries and building materials we import from our neighbors. And now the unelected Broligarch, who's in the midst of a coup of the U.S. Treasury, has started targeting Wikipedia, humanity's open encyclopedia and home base of knowledge, calling to defund it and replace it with AI chatbots that he controls. Wikipedia's article acceptance and revision moderation is not perfect and skews a little too heavily towards one gender, but is not political. And AI LLMs are too prone to hallucination and literally being able to be controlled to output overridden information to be trusted, especially when provided by someone with blatant and transparent conflicts of interest. So it's time to start making backups. While there are a few headline garnering projects of people making cyber decks and pelican cases to put in their bunkers, I'm not too worried about that. If someone succeeds in taking down a big source of information, your personal offline archive may be useful for you, but won't help the masses online. What we can do, however, is Streisand the hell out of it and pop up enough clones everywhere that enough normal people know to just search for new Wikipedia and get access to it. It's happened before. For this, we're looking at KiwiX, an open source offline web browser created way back in 2007. This browser is critical in spreading information, including being used in information smuggling operations in North Korea. KiwiX works by packaging up information websites such as Wikipedia, Stack Exchange, TED Talks, and other Wikimedia sites into .zim files, and then reading them back as if they're just a pre-built offline document. The program is free and available for everything. You can get it on Windows, Mac, Linux, Android, iOS, Raspberry Pi, browser extensions are available, and you can get server images to host it. You can build just about anything with the data from this. Install the program, and from there you can browse archive sites of all kinds. For Wikipedia specifically, it's divided up based on category, top 100 and top 1000 article lists, and so on. Personally, I think it's a little too filtering to just download the top any number of articles. Using a social filter like that doesn't really help the preservation cause. Thankfully, as of the last updated archive, Wikipedia itself is only about 110 gigabytes to download in its entirety, or only about 58 gigabytes if you don't want photos and videos for some reason. That means it's pretty tiny, all things considered, to package up on a micro SD card for a Raspberry Pi project to keep in your bunker if you're that kind of person, or just keep on your computer or NAS or pass along to friends. A ton of sites and educational content have been added to KiwiX since its release. I know I'm saying this wrong, KiwiX, it, WikiX, I, I've never heard it said out loud, so I'm just making it up as I go. I do this a lot. Anyway, a ton of sites have been added to it since its release, including Linux wikis, chemistry and engineering texts, music guidance, research in various sciences and maths, tons of documentation for programming, programming languages, or other IT topics, photography, cooking, history, and so on. You can pick and choose what you want to download and archive and update through the app. Anything you save can be viewed online or offline, making it great for building your own offline encyclopedia, free of ads or other intrusions. I'd love for there to be a more straightforward process to package up any arbitrary site to include in these archives, as we could really start preserving the net even more. But as it is, the best way for us to combat mass deletion and information censorship is to keep backups with KiwiX and support other archiving endeavors. As an example, you can install the Internet Archive browser extension and set it up to automatically archive any public website you visit. It won't like save your emails or anything, don't worry, but save those to the Wayback Machine if it hasn't been archived in the past week or month or year. That way your normal web use contributes to keeping a backup of the web too. 
The last method I wanted to highlight comes from archiveteam.org. They've released a distributed computing tool, similar to folding at home, if you remember those days of teams competing to fold proteins and running PS3s all night to contribute to science. Well, you can run a virtual box appliance to contribute to archive team's efforts to archive government pages before they get deleted. There is a lot of demanding work, and splitting it up among as many computers as possible helps speed things up and ensure as much is as protected as possible. Install VirtualBox if you haven't already, then download the Archive Team Warrior appliance from the link in the description, import the appliance in VirtualBox, use the default settings, and then start it. If you get an error, reboot your PC and try again. Worked for me every time. Go to the address given in the pop-up once it's ready. It's just localhost port 8001. Here you can assign a nickname to your tracking here and then choose a project. The government project is the priority one at the moment, but there are a lot you can do here. And then click on current progress to see how you're doing. And you should see that a bunch of illegible log messages are just scrolling by. If it's working, great. I know they've had some kind of, it's gotten really popular in the past few weeks, so they've had issues distributing the load to everyone, but there are other projects on the Warrior app that you could support if the government one isn't working out in this moment. I'll have links to more information on this project and the leaderboard in the description below. I plan on contributing to this project a ton. I've had it running on like three machines already. Public record is a crucial part of preserving history, and those who seek to destroy it and manipulate history will never work to serve your best interests. Taking small steps to ensure information is never lost, and if anything spreads more widely, benefits all of humanity, regardless of which political affiliation you might believe yourself to have. What other ways do you think we could preserve information, research, and history? Comment below, and remember to be kind. Rewind.